Are you looking to grow tomatoes and hydroponics? Stay tuned as we discuss eight mistakes you must avoid to get the most out of your plants. Mistake one, not considering starting with seedlings. You might think the only way to get seedlings ready for hydroponics is to start them from seed yourself. However, in just a few steps, you can prepare store-bought seedlings for hydroponics. Here's how you do so. One, choose a variety that suits your needs. We discuss this some more in mistakes two and three. Two, wash the medium off the root system. Be gentle to not damage the roots. Three, make a slice into a block of rock wool and tuck your seedlings into the cut. Four, place your seedling and rock wool block into your system. It's as easy as that. One of the biggest benefits of starting with seedlings is your plants will start producing fruit much sooner than those started from seed. This is especially great if you have a short growing season. Mistake two, choosing the wrong variety. There is an almost never ending supply of tomatoes you can grow, all of which fall into two categories, determinate and indeterminate varieties. Determinate varieties have a more compact, bushy growth habit, while indeterminate varieties grow more like a vine. Both of these can be grown successfully in hydroponics. Choose determinate varieties if you have more floor or horizontal growing space available. Indeterminate varieties will be better if you have more aerial or vertical growing space. You should also choose proven, reliable varieties. Commercial cultivars are a trusted option that will provide you with a heavy crop whilst offering resistance to many diseases. So if you are a beginner, look for tried and tested varieties like the Rodate tomato. Heirloom tomatoes, while often more attractive and tasty, can sometimes be a bit trickier to grow. So start off with the beginner-friendly options and then have fun experimenting with heirloom varieties. Mistake 3. Choosing the wrong hydroponic system. This will very much depend on the type of tomato you choose to grow. Generally, determinate tomatoes make the most of horizontal space offered by the ebb and flow system. The Dutch bucket and Kratky systems are great for indeterminate varieties. However, depending on your resources and creativity, it is up to you to decide which system you want to use to grow your tomatoes. If there is one system that is avoided by most tomato growers, it's the deep water culture system. This is because the moving trays and larger plants make trellising almost impossible. If you have experience in growing tomatoes and hydroponics, let us know what method you use in the comments. Mistake four, improper pruning and staking methods. Due to their vinous growth, indeterminate tomatoes require frequent pruning to keep the plants a manageable size. Not only will judicious pruning keep your plants from becoming unruly, but it will also improve the quality of the fruit. Due to their compact growth, determinate varieties require less pruning. Pruning should be avoided during the fruiting stage because determinate varieties generally don't have a prolonged harvest season, and all flowering points must be conserved for optimum fruit production. As they mature, tomatoes grow quite large and require staking to keep them upright. If your hydroponic system is movable, you should consider placing stakes into the system that can be moved with the plants if need be. If your system is a permanent structure, you can suspend support from the ceiling and lash the plants as they grow. Mistake 5. Choosing the wrong growing position. Tomatoes are warm season crops that require full sun, not only for the plants to grow well, but for fruits to develop and ripen. The best position for your hydroponic system will be in a sunny spot. However, if you receive very hot summers, you should consider providing some protective covering, like shade nets, as tomatoes can be more sensitive to heat stress in hydroponic systems. Mistake six, using the same nutrient mix throughout the season. As seedlings and young plants, nitrogen and phosphorus are essential nutrients for leaf and root growth. However, as the plant matures and the fruiting stage approaches, less nitrogen and more potassium must be provided. If high levels of nitrogen are applied at this stage in the season, leaves will grow instead of flowers. So make sure you change your nutrient mixture to suit the needs of your growing plant. Over fertilization with nitrogen can also encourage aphid infestations as they feed on the soft growth. So keep the nitrogen levels within the recommended amounts to help prevent pest attack. Mistake seven, neglecting pollination indoors. Tomatoes are self-fertile when grown outdoors, as pollination is aided by wind and pollinators. When indoors, these pollination aids are absent and we need to help pollinate the flowers. To do this, simply shake the plants. This will help dislodge the pollen from the anthers and fall on the stigmas. Mistake eight, not using companion plants. Any avid gardener will attest to the benefits of using companion plants, and they can also work their magic in a hydroponic system. Generally, you can rely on aromatic herbs with a strong aroma to deter pests. Basil helps repel flies and hornworms. Parsley can attract natural predators for the hornworms. Garlic deters spider mites and nasturtium is a great overall pest repeller. 
While it might not be feasible to actually include these plants in the hydroponic system itself, you can consider planting them around it. Not only can you consume these plants as well, but they can also make your setup more attractive. Flowering basil and nasturtium are particularly effective at this. And that's that for our video on some of the mistakes you should try avoid when growing tomatoes in hydroponics. If you have any extra tips for us and our viewers, be sure to let us know in the comments. You can download your copy of our ebook from the link in the description. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.